In this JavaScript video, we're going to be talking about conditionals, but more specifically switch statements. Now a switch statement is very similar to an if statement, an if else, an else if, and else. So I'm going to show you how to recreate this if else if else statement into switch statement. So just take a quick look. We're going to see if their name is Aaron. If it is, you're probably good at games. If it's Becky, I'm guessing you like to sing. If it's anything else, is that even a real name? So let's run this, make sure everything is good. Aaron, remember now it's case sensitive. So if I type in Becky with a capital B, it's gonna run this last one because it's checking to see if all the ASCII characters are the same. Capital B is different than lowercase b. So to get started, we type in switch and then parentheses and then curly braces like before. So it looks really similar to an if statement already, except the only thing we're gonna put in here is the variable we're gonna be checking for. And then down in here is where we put in our case. That's what they call them, case. I'm checking to see if the case is Aaron. And then I'm gonna put in a colon. And then on the next line, I'm gonna put in the, the code that I want to run if this is true. Let me just change this to an exclamation point so it's a little bit different than the one above. And then I'm gonna do this break. And then I'm gonna repeat this. So I'll just, well, let me type it in here. I'll do case and then Becky, colon, and then I'll console this out. So as you can see, it looks very similar, same kind of setup some new stuff in here. And then instead of an else, we're gonna be putting in default. So else is the same as default. And we don't need to put a case in because this is just gonna run if these ones up here do not run. So indentation is not super important, but it's really important if you wanna read it well just like if statements up here, we have this indentation for this statement. So this is the case we're gonna be checking. This is the code that's going to run if this is true. Code that's gonna run if this is true and so on. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Let's type in Aaron. So they both ran. Let's type in Becky. Ooh, I didn't change that one but it did go twice. Then let's type in just something else. And both of those ran also. So one of the things that you might be looking at and asking yourself is what does this break do? Well, let's comment this break out and see what happens. So now I'm gonna type in Aaron. And what do you think will happen? So that's a little bit different. So the one up here ran the one down here ran in the switch statement, but also the next one for Becky ran. So the way switch statements work is if the top one is true, all the rest of them will also be true. And that's why we need this break statement. This break statement helps us break out and not run the next cases, case or cases. So break breaks out of these curly braces, breaks out of the code, and then continues on. The code will continue on from there. And if we comment this one out and this one out and we run it and we type in Aaron, then all three of them will run, including the default one. Now we don't really need one after the console or the default because we're already at the very end of our code. So just to give you a quick little review, switch can be the same as if, except switches are really only kind of designed for equality. We're not gonna do less than or greater than in here. There's ways of doing it indirectly, but not directly. So switch, think equality. And what's in parentheses is what is on the left side of our comparison operators. And after the case is what is on the right side of our comparison operators. And then we have our code and then we'll have breaks. And then default is the same as else and we don't really need a break after the console of the default.